Now, obviously, two noticeable absentees from this year's list were, of course, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, who stopped royal duties in March. But um, that was a year ago they announced that, that intention. I mean, it would seem to suggest that that's really sailed now. They're, you know, they're not coming back. Yeah, I did a big feature about this uh, for the Daily Mail last week. And a, a lot of people I spoke to made very clear to me this idea of a year-long review is just dead in the water now. To be fair to Harry, it's not something he wanted because I think he felt it would kind of hold him hostage slightly and suggest that him and Meghan could conceivably come back to the UK, you know, possibly with their tails between their legs. Uh, and he didn't want people to have the impression of that. He was determined to make a success of this. But uh, someone very, very senior said to me the other day, you know, every deal they've made over the last year, with the Queen's blessing, has nevertheless been a nail in the coffin of uh, coming back to even a quasi-royal life. You simply can't have a member of the royal family um, going on to uh, Spotify, for example, and saying swipe and follow as part of a, you know, a mega bucks deal and go out and represent the British head of state. You just That, that just can't happen. So I think uh, th there might be a little bit of tinkering around the edges in terms of patronages regarding the Commonwealth. You know, Meghan still holds... Uh, royal patron of the National Ga uh, no, sorry, the National Theatre. There might be a little bit of tinkering around the edges on that, but, you know, that's it. As far as everyone's concerned, you know, it's over. Thank you for that, Rebecca. Richard, did you ever believe this was a temporary move as billed? No, but I think I sort of hoped <laughs> it would be, and I think lots of us did. You know, we're, Are you missing them? Well, yeah, I, I am, really. I'm sad, <laughs> yeah. I'm sad yeah. that they've left us. And, you know, we all feel a bit like sort of spurned boyfriends or girlfriends. I don't. You know? <laughs> Um, yeah. and, and, and from what I hear, that you know, they they do seem to be um, happy. You know that Harry is enjoying his his new life out there. Well, the weather's nice. They've it's got a big a, house. They've got a lot to look forward to. He's going to be yeah. extremely busy with all his different projects with Netflix and Spotify and all of this. And I think from what I hear, he is embracing it. Um, the life. I mean, the timing's been terrible, obviously, with the pandemic. Um, but once we're through this, then we're going to see what what they're up to, really. I mean, Angela, what do you make of it? I think that about a year ago, people had predicted that, that Harry might come back running and screaming to the royal family, but that, that seems less likely. What do you make of it? I think he's between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> I don't think he's enjoying it. Harry uh, always wore his heart on his sleeve. You can see what he feels by looking at him, and my goodness, he looks tense and grey and he's lost all his... Do you think that might be just parenthood? No, I think... That, <laughs> no, not at all. He loves small children. Oh, no, but they're children. exhausting. Yeah. No, I don't think that at all. I think he's desperate to make Megan happy. And I think that he he's trying so hard, almost like a child who wants to please his mother. You know, he felt that his mother was looking down on him, Diana, and um, that she would always lead him to do the right thing. And I think that he felt that Meghan was a bit like Diana um, in the talk when they just got engaged uh, with the BBC. And, and I, I think he's very confused about it. I don't think he's happy at all, but he can't do anything because if he came back, um, he would have failed and he doesn't want to fail anymore in his life. And he would lose seeing his child or Meghan, um, it, it, it's a very, very difficult, sad decision. I can't understand why they want an extension, um, but I think even without that, uh, he's a very damaged, unhappy man. Presumably mm. you don't agree with that. Well, it's hard to, to know and admittedly, you know, our, our sources in this country are not as good as they used to be with them in America. Most mm. announcements do come through via the States. Um, I mean, time where, will Where tell. do we go from here? Well, you know, are we going to just keep talking about whether or not they'll come back? Do you think the British media and the British public will gradually tire of even discussing them? Will, um, I really don't think so. I mean, on a practical level, they will come back because, for example, in July, when it's the what would have been Diana's 60th birthday and they're unveiling a statue at Kensington Palace, Harry will definitely come back for that um, pandemic permitting. Um, he's got his Invictus Games as well, which are due to take place in The Hague in the Netherlands. 
Um, and they actually, rather awkwardly, take place on Prince Philip's 100th birthday. Um, so he might not be around for Philip's great um, oh my centenary. Gosh. Yeah. I don't That's... think Meghan will come back. I mean, she obviously hated it within the royal family, was preparing to leave even before the wedding. Um, and I, I think she wouldn't be able to, she wouldn't want to come back. She didn't like the UK, it was too small for her. She likes to talk on a global um, platform. And, and I think we're very, very unlikely to see her again. What will be interesting is how long Harry will be allowed to be away how long she will allow him to be away. Oh my gosh, I love your shade, Angela. It's so fascinating. <laughs>